everybody. This is Joseph Vogley of Stogley Films. I'm the co-writer, the director, and the creator of the new slasher sensation, Specimen 6. And welcome to another episode of Mariana. Yes, Joseph. What podcast is this, Mariana? This is the podcast No Country for Joe and Mariana. Totally nude, live. Totally nude, live. No, just joking. That's not this one. That'll be, uh, that is a, la a past one, and we will be doing that again sometime soon because I love nudity. And Mariana loves to take her shirt off. And that's just like one of the things that we do around here. I do? So, I don't remember that. <laughs> you, do. you do. It's uh, one of those things you didn't realize, but you actually do. So, oh, right. And, Subconsciously, yeah. right? Subconsciously, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome to another episode here of the No, Ju uh, no Country for Joe and Mariana podcast. And uh, we got a great topic today, something I'm really passionate about that I, I've been like juiced to really like kind of get out there like my thoughts and my feelings and my opinions um what's our topic today mariana the snyder cut yes the, the justice, justice league snyder cut release yeah. it to us now <laughs> finally yeah and oh for the longest time i thought this wasn't going to happen and that's why i'm so excited for this to happen but before we get into the details of that we got a little bit of news for you in uh, some movie reviews and stuff like that. So in the news, um, I wanted to mention something else that I'm really excited about, and there is a new Evil Dead that's coming out. I might have mentioned this before, but I wanted to mention it again because there's been kind of an update. Bruce Campbell updated that um, Ash isn't gonna be in this particular movie, but I'm okay with that because I just want more Evil Dead, I want more Deadites. Uh, they kind of came out with a tentative title called Evil Dead Rise which is really interesting. So it's, you know, different, much different than the other Evil Deads of the titles, except for Army of Darkness. So Evil Dead Rise, the rumor is that um, Deadites are gonna like infest like a sky rise, which is kind of cool. And that's kind of the new big news there. So uh, keep an eye out for uh, the new Evil Dead, which will be hopefully shooting and coming out in the next year or two. Um, Mariana, have you been watching any like cool things that you wanna talk to people about? You know, um, I was just kind of browsing my Hulu uh, this morning, and I found that Freddy vs. Jason was on there, and mm -hmm. I haven't seen that movie in a few years, so I decided to watch that today. That is one of my favorites. As everybody knows, I'm a big Jason Voorhees fan, and I'll take what I can get. And of course, as a horror fan, when I remember when it came out, everybody for years had wanted to see uh, Jason versus Freddy, and um, it finally happened. I really enjoyed it. Some people, you know, they kind of talk crap about it, but I think it's a super cool film. Uh, there's lots of cool kills in it. I actually went and saw it in the theater twice in the same weekend because I was I loved it so much. And there's some great. Um, nudity in it there's some great kills freddy is funny as ever there's just all the characters are very um even when you don't like them you like them and in like certain characters you really want to see die who's your favorite character in that movie other than freddy or jason i would actually have to say um i can't remember what her name is the character's name but it's played by katherine isabel who uh, was in Ginger Snaps and Ginger Snaps Back and then the third Ginger Snaps, but plus a bunch of other horror films and other films in general. She's, she's probably one of my favorite actors um, of the past 20 years. And I really think that she's very talented. She was on Supernatural uh, for uh, two or three episodes and she's been in lots of other things. She's in a new Netflix show called The Order, I think it is. Um, I really enjoy seeing her in film. So I really liked her character. She, she she's this flawed character that, uh, you know, she smokes cigarettes and her boyfriend doesn't like that and 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 she uh, there's a shower scene but apparently there's a body double in the shower scene but I instantly like the character because uh, she uh, was just uh, she, she's drinking too much and she's kind kind of ditzy but kind of not I don't know I was uh, you know instantly in love with Catherine Isabel back in the day and I appreciated her even more in Freddy versus Jason and she. Um, it was very sad when she died in the film as well. So how about your, what was your favorite character in Freddy vs. Jason? I think this is the one movie where the stoner is absolutely necessary. And so Bill Freeberg is <laughs> my favorite in this one. And you have that scene where he like wants to stay back to, to smoke a joint when they 
when they get into the um, asylum and, mm-hmm. and the, he, <laughs> he's, you know, he's like totally cool with the, with the vision that's in front of him. Uh, he doesn't care. He just wants to get high. And then he, he gets, you know, uh, basically Freddie goes inside him and, and you see this like other side of like a, a character like being used for a dual purpose right like he's de- he's definitely like the comic relief but he's also used as kind of like the red herring and kind of yeah. like his freddy's um like link to uh the the world in in and you don't see that a whole lot in the movie he's he's i think like one of like two that yeah get possessed yeah. like that. yeah and it's because generally because of some sort of drug that allows them to be inhabited by Freddy, which is yeah, really tranquilized cool. in, in one yeah. way or another. So it kind of leaves this empty vessel. And so kind of like the pot that he smokes kind of leaves him to be this vessel of sorts for Freddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. There is a lot of really interesting things in that film that they kind of throw in there. Um, I recently, just a couple of days ago, I rewatched a classic and um, it, people would be like, okay, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but it is a big deal for me. So I rewatched the classic Ghostbusters from the early 80s. But it wasn't just that I had watched it, but the experience that I had. So Friday night, I actually went out to the drive-in movie theater. And I haven't been to a drive-in movie theater in 25 years or so. And so it was really kind of like uh, a very special uh experience for me there there was an arcade there there was go-karts i didn't go in the go-karts but there was lots and lots of people socially distanced in their cars and it was kind of like it definitely made me feel nostalgic for my childhood and and we rented a radio and we had the back of our car popped open and we watched it like that all night and it just made me experience that movie in a different way that i hadn't experienced before because i had only seen it at home and not in any sort of social way and so seeing the movie up on the big screen like that um i you know i even kind of got the jokes more and i got like just the excitement of what was going on on the screen and i just had a really great time so it just reminded me how much i love ghostbusters but how much i missed that kind of uh experience of the movie seeing it with so many other people and knowing that everybody else is enjoying that movie as much as you are at that moment and there's really this energy in the air so That was really cool for me. So yeah, of course, the original Ghostbusters. Um, And then just earlier today, I ended up watching an animated movie that I was excited for. I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. So I always buy those um, when they come out. And there's a new Mortal Kombat animated film called Mortal Kombat Legends, The Scorpion's Revenge. And boy, it's a rated R cartoon and they don't pull any punches. Uh, There is blood, there's heads being ripped off. So if you're like scared that like they're going to dull it down a bit, you know, from what goes on in the game, they don't. If anything, they kind of enhance it. So people are losing their heads. People like uh, Jax, they actually show Jax getting his arms ripped off. There's blood flying all over the place. Some really cool kung fu in the film. I, I loved it. So I would definitely recommend seeing that new Mortal Kombat animated film. Uh, Mariana. Joseph. I'm really excited to talk about the Snyder Cut today, um, as you can see. But I want to um, ask you first, what are your impressions of uh, the DC movies that have come out uh, just a little bit kind of building up to the Justice League and all that stuff? Because it's the Justice League extended or the DC extended universe in the films. Um, What do you think of the films, Man of Steel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? So I... Universe-wise, I'm more of a Marvel Universe person, but I've always found DC to be really good at character building and and, uh, really good at kind of looking at the darker side of these sorts of uh, characters. You know, Mm -hmm. we consider them heroes, but I think DC really does a really good job of kind of like skewing that line um, between the heroes and the villains. And so I enjoy it on a different level than I enjoy Marvel. Um, that being said, uh, the Justice League movie itself, I didn't enjoy it simply because it wasn't the universe that I was used to when it came to DC. You know, um, Snyder has such a a vision of how he wanted it and unfortunate events happened. 
So Joss Whedon uh, stepped in and you know, Joss Whedon is great um, when it comes to Marvel. He really adds that those like bright tones uh, and, and he's able to kind of like make it humorous, right? Uh, with, the, with the cuts and, and, and some of the things that he does in Justice League. You know, I think those were not necessary in in Justice League. And so I, you know, it's going to be on HBO Max and it'll be like the first time I ever get HBO Max because that's where it's going to be streaming. But the Zack Snyder's Justice League, I think, is going to be um, just really wonderful. And, you know, we we spoke last time to um, uh, Tony Maziello and he was talking about how his journey with uh, having to put together this movie, uh, uh, Metal Noir, to kind of focus on the vision of the creators. And so I think Zack Snyder is kind of doing that with his own movie, right? Like he's, he's yeah. piecing it back together. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see it. I want to fill in some of that. Um, you kind of like just lightly touched upon it. I think maybe a diplomatic way. I feel very passionate as a as a fan of of the films that like Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, so I'm just gonna unload. People don't often hear me talk shit about films because I don't like to, but in this case, I really I think it's necessary. So for one, I love the D I love most of the DC films. I really like Man of Steel. I think it's this wonderful sci science fantasy film. We get to see uh, Krypton in like the best way possible that we've never seen it on film. When you watch it in high definition, it looks amazing. I saw that four times in the theater. I'm a huge Superman fan, as many people know. You can see behind me, I even have a Superman tattoo right there. I grew up reading the DC comic books. So I know a little bit about, you know, comic books. And I know, you know, in my heart, how I feel about these things. I literally have 30,000 comic books back there. I grew up reading Superman all the time. And so I love seeing, uh, you know, I saw Superman Returns. It, it was not my favorite Superman film, but I enjoyed watching Superman. Man of Steel, however, I thought it was great. Superman, it showed Superman coming into his own. It had that whole um, kind of Christian uh, uh, allegorical sort of thing going on there. Um, there was, uh, I don't, it was wonderful. I liked it. I know it was divisive among people, um, and which is cool. Everybody's allowed to have their opinions here and there. Mine is, I love Man of Steel. And so I was really super excited. I saw it for Batman versus Superman. Um, now, I know it's a flawed film. There is, you know, flaws in it. Um, I still really liked it. I have the Ultimate Edition Blu-ray. I saw that movie twice in the theater. I probably would have seen it three or four times. I just didn't have the time to go back to the theater as much as I enjoyed at the time. And so I saw it once when I was vacationing in Boston. I did not want to wait till I got back here home to watch it. So I saw it in Boston. And then I came back and the weekend after that, I saw it again in the theater. I had kind of bad experiences in the theater though, because um, uh, people, certain people uh, didn't respect that other people were trying to watch the movie. So they're being all loud and laughing and doing all that stuff. But that didn't dampen my experience of the film and i know it is a flawed film but i think there's some really big themes in uh zack snyder's vision of these superheroes like the difference between man and god and how in the gods you know and how we kind of view superheroes as those things and in batman versus superman we see batman in a different light than we've really seen him in the other films so we see from the get-go he is this experienced, much older Batman. He's already been on the scene for 20 plus years. Um, and we see that he's kind of very jaded after all these years, but he's especially jaded after um, what super, what happened during the first Man of Steel. We see, you know, Metropolis got destroyed. A lot of his friends got killed in, in that great battle between Zod and, and Superman. And so he's seeing Superman in a different way. And we also see what, regular people see Batman as they kind of look at Batman as kind of a monster in a way. Like uh, some people are like, okay, he's cool. But other people are like, he's way scary. And, he, and that's the way that I think Batman um, has always, has been uh, many times, especially back in the day when Denny O'Neill was writing Batman and during the 70, uh, late seventies and throughout the eighties, Batman was seen more as a myth than a, 
look, there's Batman up there. He's going to save us. It's like, no, people didn't, they were even sure if he existed or not. So, um, anyway, that being said, that's Batman versus Superman. I didn't want to like dwell too long on that. Uh, Justice League, I was really excited for Justice League to come out after that. I watched the trailer probably 50 times and I kept analyzing it and I saw like that part where Alfred is sitting there waiting for uh, somebody to show up and you're like, ooh, who is that? Who is that? Right? We actually know who that is now because Zack Snyder released a little thing, so it's Superman. But um, there's so much more to it and so I was really excited to see this film and I started hearing these trickles of things going on behind the scenes with... Uh, uh, it, I felt very bad for Zack Snyder, and I, I want to emphasize that I'm not the hugest Zack Snyder fan. I wasn't that crazy about Watchmen. I watched the director's cut. I thought it was pretty good, but I wasn't that crazy about it. I've seen some of his other films, 300, and I'm like, okay, they're okay, but I wasn't this big fanboy about Zack Snyder. Not until I saw Man of Steel, and then I was like, okay, he's got a vision. I'm really digging his vision. So I feel very bad for Zack Snyder because I was hearing the same things everybody else was like he had to step away because he had a family tragedy that happened and they said Joss Whedon was coming in and so of course at the time I didn't really know a lot about what was going on so it's like oh, okay well that kind of makes sense but as the last couple of years have rolled by more and more information has come out where it from a lot of rumor but also from a lot of like what the actors on set have said since was that uh, Zack Snyder more or less got booted off the project you know, and then the studio kind of covered it up with a uh, using his personal tragedy to spin the PR machine on it, you know. And so uh, and you started to kind of think, you know, I started to think uh, well, some things are kind of weird here with the behind the scenes stuff. That's not everything was matching up, but you can never honestly believe what was going on in Hollywood and what they give you. And then I was still excited. I was like, okay, well, maybe he's just stitching up a few things. And then I go in and I see the movie. And after the first two minutes, I was like, this is not what Zack Snyder was doing. I guarantee you. Uh, he had the whole mustache being blurred out with the wobbly mouth Superman. And I was like, oh, God, I'm going to sit here for two hours. And I got a really bad feeling about this. <laughs> and as the movie kept going, I kept like being like, uh, okay, I the scenes were not Zack Snyder's scenes. And it turns out that later on you start finding out, I didn't like Justice League. I, I disliked it immensely. And I couldn't, I tried watching it a second time. Like maybe I just misjudged. I think it's it. all the reshoots. It, it was, well, so that's the thing. There actually was like, from my understanding, and a lot of the actors have said this and, and the cinematographer and special effects people, they said Joss Whedon got put on the movie and they reshot 80 percent if not more of the film that's a crazy and, amount <laughs> yeah it's a really and like yeah they said that joss whedon got brought in and he completely rewrote this whole thing and they used very little of Zack snyder's footage and you could tell because the tone wasn't there they didn't pick up on the threads from the last couple films the whole nightmare mm -hmm. sequence which i really enjoyed in batman versus superman yeah. i thought it was so cool there's this great game called injustice 2 on my phone and I play the Nightmare Batman. He's my best character on there. He's got his kick-ass machine gun. And um, so I, I really enjoy it. But so more and more kept coming out where you, you knew like as a person who was uh, a f dedicated, not, I don't know dedicated is the right word, but a fan of Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman that you saw this vision coming to fruition, yet you knew that somebody peed in your Cheerios very badly when you saw Justice League. It was just like, this is not what I was told. This was not what I was expecting. And I don't want to think that I have any like personal ownership over these things, but I do have an expectation in my heart of what I was hoping to see. And so as more as these stories come out and the actors and the, all the people are saying, release the Snyder Cut, you're like, okay, this means something. And then Zack Snyder says, yes, that's not my film. From, I won't even look at it, but from what I understand and what I've been told, like 80, 85% of that is not mine. I don't know what that is. And he's saying, I got kicked off. And some of the actors are now saying like Ray Fisher, who plays Cyborg, he was supposed to have a much bigger role in Justice League. And Zack Snyder even said, you're, sp you're the heart of this film, of my film. And Ray Fisher came out and, and disavowed the theatrical cut. 
when it first came out, he was, you know, promoting it like he was being told to promote it. But now he's just like, well, mm-hmm. actors have to promote the movie, right? Yeah. Like, and it makes sense. Job. Yeah. And I think at this point, he's kind of like, I think he got kicked around to the curb too, because he was supposed to have a bigger presence. And, and once Zack Snyder got pushed out of the way, they kind of took away everything that he had done. And um, I was recently listening to a podcast with Kevin Smith it was like fat man and something or other and and they were talking about the Snyder cut and um Kevin Smith actually he just said that like he had heard things too so he was on the set of Rise of Skywalker talking to some of the digit some of the special effects guys who had also worked on Justice League and he said that he heard stories about Joss Whedon on the set basically Joss was going around talking shit about Zack Snyder's stuff openly and ray fisher actually he tweeted the other day that joss whedon was abusive unprofessional and gross on set and that there's all these nasty stories coming out and so it's like it starts clicking in your brain you're like not only did i you know not not only was it kind of confirmed that i i knew what i was watching wasn't what was supposed to be on screen but this confirms it and i mean you can probably just talk shit about this theatrical cut of Justice League all day long with how Steppenwolf is changing size constantly. You're like, what the heck is going on there? But they actually cut out huge things like Martian Manhunter is supposed to be in there. He's going to be in the Snyder cut. So excited for that. Darkseid's actually going to be the big baddie in it. And they don't have this whole thing where um, the parademons smell fear and stuff. Apparently that was a yeah. Joss added thing. And because at, at the ending, I was like, oh, they smell his fear. So now they're going to attack him. I was like, what the hell is this shit? You know, it was just like, yeah, the whole thing is shit. I'm going to say it, you know, because that's how I feel about it. And I don't like talking shit about movies, but I kind of feel like I paid my money for that film. And uh, I got my hopes up. And, uh, and then, yeah, somebody peed in my Cheerios. I don't, I don't like that. So that is why I'm very excited for the Snyder Cut to be coming out on HBO Max. Um, wh- I'm going to keep talking about this, but I want you to do a little bit more talking to Mariana Chipoletta. Um, have you heard any of these other things? I know I kind of put my ear to the social media grind just on this stuff, but have you heard any of this stuff? I, I, you know, a lot of what you said, I have heard, you know, you know, I've, I've seen, well, I've read, you know, I've seen it uh, going around and, you know, a a lot of people that I talk to are comic book fans and a lot of my friends are comic book fans. So whenever this topic comes up, a lot of people get very excited to talk about it, but also very frustrated that Mm -hmm. they, you know, it feels like there, there shouldn't have been this need for uh for for this because i mean think about it if you think about it like the it's a restoration of of an entire film Mm -hmm. and it's gonna cost you know millions of dollars uh just to complete the the effects the the editing and and all of this and i mean i really i really like that zach snyder decided to just call it zach snyder's justice league like this is what I wanted. Yeah. And I think that that makes a huge impact. Uh, uh, and, and like I said, like I'm more of a mo- Marvel movie fan, but that doesn't mean that I don't like DC. D- I really like the individual films of DC, but they're unable, they were in this Justice League, they were unable to bring all those characters together in the same way that um, Marvel God bless them. They try to to create these like origin stories and things like that, and and they're compelling. But those characters don't really you don't really come to understand those characters until they are together, right? Like they mm-hmm. are a unit. Whereas in DC, they're all individual and they all have so much depth and complexity. Marvel does too, but but DC I feel has has more of that. Mm-hmm. And so I understand that it's harder to bring that together, but in the way that I think Zack Snyder would would have chosen to do it would have made more sense to me. So yes, I did say say it in a diplomatic way, but um, my my you know my very true feelings are that yeah, I didn't I didn't believe that this movie belonged in the DC universe basically. 
They definitely, yeah. And I heard those stories where the producers in the studio, a lot of those producers, which are gone now, by the way, because that Justice League got so panned and lost so much money. Like all the fans, you know, from Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman, they didn't show up in the theater because of everything that happened. Um, but, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, all the actors, uh, Henry Cavill even, and Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck, they, they all got slighted. Ben Affleck, there's rumors. I think it's a little bit more than a rumor right now. But he was supposed to have his own Batman film and everything like that. And, of course, he had his other reasons that he said that he dropped out of it. But now we're getting these stories that it was more or less because of some of the producers that are on the pick that ended up kind of trashing everything that Zack Snyder wanted to do and that Ben Affleck actually signed on to do because Ben Affleck, originally signed on to be Batman because Zack Snyder convinced him. He said, this is my vision. This is what, you know, I want to do. And do you want to be Batman? He got Ben Affleck excited. So, and all these people. And so what ended up happening from my understanding was they shot, you know, Zack Snyder's movie and then he had to go away and they moved Joss Whedon in and they took away the purpose of why all these actors jumped on in the first place and all these other artists. Cause at the end of the day, it is this big thing that all these artists worked on and it is all their visions, not just Zack Snyder's. So to have Joss move on in there and just start saying, I'm the greatest cause I directed the Avengers. So move out of the way. Let me take care of this business. And then there are these, these other rumors that, I think are a little bit more than rumors because Ray Fisher has actually played cyborg as saying, saying these things where Joss was abusive and unprofessional and gross on set. And he, and there's these other people, like I think one of the stunt women was saying that Gal Gadot didn't want to do this one particular stunt where it had flash laying on top of her. And it just, it, it was kind of like one of those kind of immature, uh, but jokes where like the flash landed on her and her boobs soft in the, the fall kind of thing that you would find in a marvel film yeah in not in, Justice in dc yeah in dc we're dealing with these huge themes these herculean tragedies that are going on and so we're dealing with much bigger concepts and i don't think a lot of people quite understand that um the difference so yes in marvel we do get these you know gods and monsters and people and they are some wonderful films over there and i enjoy almost all of those too um but in this one we are dealing with a different set of themes and in much bigger deeper uh, human themes as well and so and and i think people need to i don't need to i think a lot of people are missing uh the symbolism that we're dealing with in these and the themes are much different, not just darker, but more more complex, I think, in many ways. So you're supposed to reflect on this. I think a lot of people these days don't have that capability of reflection very well, um, where they can, they don't want to analyze the deeper issues inside themselves. And I think that's what the point of DC has always, at least since me growing up and reading the comic books has been, where it makes you think about your role in the world and what you have uh, you know, put out into the world and accomplish yourself. So you have to think, have I super, that's what Superman's point is. You look at Superman and he's this very pure, or at least he tries to be a uh, superhero and he's supposed to be this symbol of hope. That's what the S means. It's the house of L, but it also means hope. And um, to have hope, I think is a, a much bigger idea than just being able to swing around like Spider-Man does. And Spider-Man has these big themes too, but Superman, we look at Superman and we are supposed to be looking at ourselves. We're, we're thinking, have I done enough today to better the world? Or have I even done enough to better myself? And uh, so Batman has that kind of same thing too. So in Batman, we, we have to kind of analyze what he does is uh, he's a, a vigilante, but he's motivated by the death of his parents, a, a great tragedy that has shaped him. And we got to think, you know, if I were put in a similar situation, how would that change me? Would it jade me to the point where I wouldn't believe in humanity anymore? Or would it make me want to go out not and, and change the world into a better place so that that didn't happen to somebody else. So, and, uh, you know, Wonder Woman stands for very much the same thing. She stands for the ideals of 
humankind and hope and things of that nature. And she shows up and she, and her presence in uh, the broader world is supposed to, you know, make people change their minds about how they treat other people. But now I've been rambling a lot more, but I think Justice League, the Joss Whedon jo Justice League kind of got lost all of that stuff. And Zack Snyder was dealing with those much deeper, bigger things. Um, what is the difference between God and man, as it were? It's um, interesting that you bring that up because um, I totally agree. Because in in Marvel, you know, you have you have big themes, and it does like connect to people and relate to people. But it it connects to their side that they're like, you know, a lot of Marvel is is mutants a lot of the time and so it's really just it's playing on you to 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 think about it's okay for me to be different i can use my differences yeah. to help dc is a much deeper look into yourself and i think it makes people ask really hard questions and i think sometimes when you're you know you have all the you know a lot of people go i'll i'll admit to this like when i first started out reading comic books and stuff it wasn't to explore my inner issues it was to escape them and that's why yeah. marvel really like picked me up because it was like very colorful very bright you know all these like things that that were happening were all very interconnected with the fact that they're different whereas you can i find dc characters much more relatable you find mm -hmm. and you know it's kind of much, a much more like mature uh sense of story it's more dramatic it's not supposed to be funny uh and so i you know joss whedon just tried too hard to make it the you know the marvel standard basically yeah. and and yeah marvel sold and the marvel universe is huge there's a huge following for it but that doesn't mean you have to copy it you know you mm -hmm. can have this I, I think people do want this deeper uh, you know, understanding and relatability with these complex characters like the Joker. Um, a lot of people were 50 50 on it. Like some people really hated it and some people really liked it. Mm -hmm. I really liked it because it was a character study of this, you know, this kind of this villain that has the stigma of being just kind of a wacko. Um, but it, you know, you, you see that there's actually mental illness there. Yeah. And so, I think it brings to people, I think some people just find that reality too hard to understand, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the real issues that DC brings up, that Zack Snyder's vision would have brought up was too real for some, for, for some people like Joss Whedon who felt this isn't what the people need, the people need this. But when you do that, you're destroying some other person's vision. And like you said, it was like 80% of the film that was completely redone and that means that the film was basically ready to go and then they was like you know what that's not the movie we're putting out yeah and that's that's really upsetting like if someone did that to you or to me like i'd be upset about that like you can't tell me what my vision is you know yeah. go make your own movie Right, yeah. You know, I often think that too when people kind of do those Star Wars fan films of sorts. And they're kind of cool. Sometimes it's cool to watch those things. But you get these bigger budgeted Star Wars fan films. Like, why wouldn't you want to make your own vision of a space opera? If you have, you know, you get this opportunity um, to, to put something out in the world, why not have it be your own vision of sorts? And so, um, I mean, that's off topic anyhow. But yeah, so. I'm really excited for the Snyder Cut. So it's supposed to be about, the rumors are it's either going to be a four and a half hour movie. I can't wait. Or they're going to break it up into like six parts. And so it's going to be even longer. So that's why they're doing more shooting and more editing and stuff like that. Cause they want to be down for that. I know, right? <laughs> However <laughs> long it needs to be. <laughs> Give me more. I mean, if it's like, I love the, I watched the Batman versus Superman ultimate edition. I think it was like three hours or close to that. And I, it, always felt like an hour and a half to me because there's such cool stuff that's going on and the themes you're constantly thinking about the themes as you're watching the film and digging into it um i like how that you brought up that the joker and how we're, it makes you think about you know it's not just a villain but this guy has a is 
has these mental illness issues and he was also brought up um, having a very broken family and all that stuff. And so, and I, and I think that's what DC is, is it kind of, it gives you a, a deeper understanding of who these, you know, or uh, more, it makes you question more like, what is the nature of a villain? What is the nature of a hero? And also of God and man and monster and how we perceive that. And the Marvel is great when it comes to the X-Men and all that stuff. Um, and it makes you, you know, consider some of these things as well, or you're an outsider, you're, you know, you, but that's still a good thing. You're different. That's a good thing. But in the DC, it, it, it digs deeper, I think. And especially in the Joker, it dug deeper. And, uh, well, even ba going back to like, uh, uh, the the uh, Batman films of Batman Begins and and the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises they're dealing with those much more complex bigger um, themes and you remember the Joker in uh, in the Dark Knight when his whole point was trying to show that humankind if you just just pushed a little then um, that could change everything and I don't think that Marvel really like does consider something as complex as that. It's like are we all on this like thin line and if we just get a little push would we actually you know would things change so are, are we who we think we are anyway so uh i i think i'm i'm super excited for the snyder cut um i didn't want to be diplomatic with this episode whatsoever and people know me i don't like talking shit about films but repeating my cheerios joss whedon and so i'm not putting up with it anymore and i am going to get hbo max just so i can watch justice league i'm very excited for this you're um, welcome hbo <laughs> yes, thank you so much yeah and i think this is a really i think it's great that they ended up backing Zack snyder and and kind of letting these people ray fisher and henry cavill and, and everybody, Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck kind of realized they're, and everybody that worked on the movie, like even down to like the people that put nails into uh, into the set and everything like that when they're building stuff, like that's their vision. They all signed on for a particular reason. And I think that's really great. And it's so great that we get to see, oh, there's so many other cool things like uh, supposedly Ryan Reynolds is going to be in as Green Lantern. Uh, coming back. Coming back. I'm sure he and, loves wearing it. Oh yeah, and um, there's gonna be and Dark Side's actually gonna be it. There, the, even the actor that played Dark Side originally was told he couldn't say that he played Dark Side because of the theatrical cut didn't have Dark Side. He was like, "Oh yeah, I'm actually in a movie, and uh, I play Dark Side," and he's allowed to say it now. So because they had a changing of the guard over there at Warner Brothers, and um, I think it's very, I think it's a very positive thing. There's a lot of naysayers that are like. Oh, this wasn't a good decision. This means bad things, and it's like, no, I think it means that a, uh, a artistic vision is being allowed back into the world, and that lies cannot cover up the truth. And no that, more limitations. And no more limitations, and that I think is the epitome of what what Superman's symbol stands for. It's hope, and and lies cannot lead the way anymore when hope is still there to to shine a light you know and to have a lead it as an example so and i think that's what the snyder cut is is it's leading an example for all of us to um realize what the truth is and to lead better lives just as superman always did all right everybody well i've talked a lot and uh i appreciate you joining in on us on this one it was we got lots more good episodes coming up here in the next couple weeks we're probably going to be doing a lot more horror stuff uh we just veered a little over this way because it was something that uh, both betty Anna and i really wanted to discuss and talk about um so but we there's so much more cool horror movies uh to talk about new things that are coming up in the news uh new trailers we got more reviews i know i got a lot more movies that i wanted to talk about that i've been watching recently i got specimen six which is coming out i've been working hard on the editing i'm gonna get that out into everybody's hands um and i can't wait for that to happen and then mariana and i will be working on another project later on at the near the august ish whatever we got a couple things going on and i'm really excited to be working on that so i want to get i want to get specimen six done and out uh so thank you mariana what sort of uh fancy italian dish would you recommend watching the snyder cut with Oh, goodness. Now I have to think about that. I didn't mm. think about that. Mm. I would say, let's see, it's coming out. 
next year, right? Yep, 2021. You know, I'll, I'll, I, would, I would say a nice, like, roast. A roast? A roast. Okay, go go and make roast yourself some potatoes. Roast, <laughs> roast and potatoes, because it's, it's good in America, and just roast and potatoes. Well, you, because it's going to be four and a half hours. I mean, I think <laughs> we should have, like, a banquet, you know? <laughs> True, yeah, so just have a banquet of food out, because you're going to be hungry since through four and a half hours of Justice League. And, you know, I'm going to be watching that over and over and over again when it comes out. And so I'm probably going to be like bleeding from my eyes and everything because I'll be staying up for days watching it over and over again because that's how excited I am for it. So make sure you got a smorgasbord of food when you watch this film. Oh yeah. Please let us know in the comments what you think of the of the Snyder Cut coming out and your thoughts and feelings on superhero movies in general. Right? Yes. yes absolutely. Okay. And remember to hit the uh, subscribe button, folks. And keep joining Mariana and myself here for lots more cool discussions about lots more cool stuff. All right. Uh, Mariana, what could you say to these uh, lovely people in your wonderful Italian accent and Italian words as a, a fairly well? Oh, um, well, just about the most famous thing an Italian can say. Mm -hmm. Arrivederci. Oh, my goodness. She's got my heart burning again, folks. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for joining us.